What's going on guys? It's been a minute since I made a video. Um, I had a couple people asking, so I figured I'd go over how to install your wideband. Um, this is a speedy FI car for those that are new here. So we'll be going over that. Let's get started. Okay, so full disclosure, I already had the gauge installed. I actually uninstalled it for the purpose of this video, which is why it's already in the um, vent right here. But regardless, it's still the, the, the same premise. So. You're gonna have two sets of wires if you bought the same gauge that I did, right? You're gonna have one with a smaller connector, right? You can see this one has what, eight pins? And then you're gonna have the one that looks like Medusa on the end, and it's going to have 10 pins. So this eight pin one right here, the one that does not have all the wires, has a big plug on the other end. Plug actually looks like this. This is obviously your O2 makes sense, right? So this plugs in to the big plug, the eight pin plugs into the eight pin on the back of the wideband, right there. Kind of hard to see, but boom. It's your first set of wiring done. It's easy, that's all you gotta do. So now, for the power and output, you have your, what I'm gonna call the Medusa plug. So you have all these wires sticking out of the end, and as you can see, I've taped these back. You only need four. So you have your black and your red, which is obviously power and ground. And then this is your output um, to your ECU, and I'll show you how to wire those. But first, we need to get power to the gauge. So the easiest way to get power, in my opinion, is your cigarette outlet. I have this light out just because it's easier to reach up in there. But I pulled the plugs off of the back of the outlet, and then I put these spade connectors on it. The black and blue, as you can see, this is your positive, and just the regular black is your negative. If you don't want to use your cigarette lighter, um, there are tons of other things you can use. I've seen people use the window. I've seen people tap into the um, radio. There, you can do whatever you want. I just didn't want to have to tap into the tumbler. I didn't want to mess with the ignition stuff, so I just did the cigarette. You can even do the light if you wanted. But this was just easier because I don't use it. So pulled them out, put the spade connectors on. Easy, so now we have power to the gauge. So with the power taken care of, right, we now have these two left. The white is your five volt positive out, and your brown is your five volt negative out. So for the white, your five volt positive out, I made this cable, which has white wire specifically just to help understand what's going on here. So this is your stock O2 plug. So your O2 originally plugs in here and this is obviously the male end. The female end is one wire and the one wire runs around and connects up to the O2 which is in your header. Obviously my header is out right now but it's pretty simple, it's one wire. You snip that off and then you extend it. So you can see right here I have just soldered them together and I used white just for the purpose of the video. So this, right, this is a female spade. It connects up to the male spade that I put on the end of the white. That is your five volt positive taken care of. So we have one more left. So now for the brown, you need to make a whole custom cable. You can see I have a male spade connector on the end of the brown. And then I have this very long cable with a female connection on one end, and then it runs down. I don't feel like taking it out because it's already zip tied up underneath the steering column, but it runs through there, out a hole in the firewall. It is this upper wire right here, and it runs around and is grounded right there, right underneath the fuel pressure regulator. So this ground right here, is the one that runs around through the firewall and then that's what you're going to connect up to your brown end on your medusa plug right boom that goes to there that's all four wires taken care of so with everything plugged up it's now time to plug both of the main connections into the back of the wideband and it's pretty simple they only go in one way make sure this cable that goes to the stock o2 plug actually plug that in because the first time I started the car and went and drove it, 
the gauge was reading, right? This was reading perfectly fine, but the ECU wasn't wasn't seeing anything. It was just pegged at like the minimum, which I think is like 7.7. .7. And I was freaking out, changing settings, and it turned out that I just didn't plug it in underneath the hood. So make sure you plug those connections back in. So with all that out of the way, we need to hop into Tutor Studio and I'll show you what to do. Okay, so here we are in Tuner Studio. I know this has not connected my car. It's obviously in no condition to run right now. Headers off, intakes off, interiors half disassembled. So just bear with me. The settings are still the same. First step, you're going to want to come in here and go to Tuning, AFR 02. And by default, if you're using the base map, this sensor type is going to be narrow band. You need to change that to wide band. Um, then you just click Burn, click Close. Step one, done. Second step, come in here under Tools. Go to Calibrate AFR Sensor, and you clicked on an AEM video, so I'm assuming you have an AEM gauge, but if not, there are other presets down here, like if you have an Innovate, you can pick from one of these. Um, and if your product number matches one of these two sets right here, choose that one. Mine didn't, tech, mine didn't match either one of these, so I had to just guess. So click on the first one, click right to controller, click close, start the car, and give this gauge right here... 30 seconds or so to start showing something. It should be showing something. And you want this gauge to obviously match exactly what your physical gauge is showing. Now, if you remember that white wire that we connected to the stock O2 connector, that is how the ECU is seeing um, what the gauge is actually outputting. So you want these to match. You don't even want them to be, you know, 0.1 off. You want them to be as close as you can possibly get them. So if it's not directly on, come in here and you can select the other one. Click right to controller, close, and then C. Still, if neither one of those are working, you can come in here under custom linear wideband. And I was using these values right here. 0.5 volts is 8.5. 4.5 volts is 18.5. That seemed like a pretty decent point for me. Um, but after I fixed a, a grounding issue, I just went back and used one of the presets. And that's all we got time for today. I'm going to leave you guys with this little teaser. I had to update my KPA values in my table from uh, 24 to 100 up to 24 to 230. If you know what that extra 130 is, you know what's on the way. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope this was informative. And catch you in the next one. Peace.